I am Tessa Marie and welcome to the morning blessings. Today is August 15th, 2024, 7.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hello, Colleen. Good morning. Like my top? Took it in a little. <laughs> and here we are. Hi, Peter. Good morning. Hello. Hi, Lisa. Welcome back. How are you feeling this morning? Hello, everybody. It is that wonderful time. I'm having jasmine tea. What did Kylie say? Oh, it smells like really true jasmine. Anyway, Kylie has smells and colors nobody else has. Anyway, here we go. Um, Hello, Georgie. How are you feeling this morning? Stacy is still drunk from her birthday yesterday, so she must be suffering a, deep, a big hangover. As you know, it was her birthday yesterday. And Georgie, welcome, all of you. Hello, the show is on the road. So guys, as you know, my book is out. Look at this. I made a thing for you upside down when I look at it, right side when you look at it. All my books, they're all there. Seven. Can you believe it? Seven. So the only thing is, you remember, no matter what you have to do, start with one. This book here is tiny. It's a little thing, but it was the root. So from there, it went to here. It went there. It went here. It went there. It went here. And now it's there. And who knows where I'll take it. So we are here and let us get the show on the road. A beautiful collage. Thank you. Um, thanks, Georgie. I love that. So guys, anyway, I'm doing the, the seminar on the 28th of September instead of the seven. I'm going away. So I have to do it on the 28th and it's seven weeks. You guys all know all about it. And we will be doing one chapter a week and it will be an hour. And it's going to be on a Saturday. And don't forget, $77.97. That's what it costs. So it's like $10 an hour or something like that. So anyway, but you will have fun. And you will learn something. And you'll be able to strap that to you. So this moment, yesterday we had this thing about manifestation. And we did an actual live um, Meditation. How did you like the meditation? Georgie, you were there calling. I know Colin said she loved it. So how, thank you. Um, I think Kathleen made that. There was a time she was into jewelry or is that from my cousin? I have no idea. Um, but somehow, thank you so much. Um, yeah, so we did that thing, that meditation. So somebody saw, heard it yesterday and they said, oh my God, I never thought I could do this. It was, she said, I followed you. And when you said to close your eyes, and she, she said, when I came out of it, I was looking for more. So actually, that meditation, I created it, oh my God, years and years and years ago. I can't remember when I started using it or teaching others through it. So it was really, it just, you know, when I start the thing, some, some things I prepare because I get the inclination. And then as I go, some things just develop. Hi, Loretta, good morning. So the meditation was, was a little bit deep for some, and it, it was really good. So, you know, one day we must do it on a Zoom call so you guys can really enjoy. There is more to it. Remember, you were on a, on a staircase outside, marble staircase outside. How high did you go? What happens when you met your guardian angel up there? Did you, were you able to see their face? When I first did it, I didn't see my guardian angel's face. So it was quite a different situation. And then as I did it, I was able to understand what was going on. So anyway, it is up to you. So today, during my morning meditation, you know, I do a 10 minute meditation, joy. That was what it was to so talk to you about joy. And joy, let me put this cup down. I went out with Colleen on Saturday and I got some lovely cup mugs. I need another or two. I told her so she has to buy them and then I will e transfer the money. Um, what is joy? Joy is a choice. Hmm. It is a thought action to pull the energy of joy to ourselves. It has to be a thought, but an actionable thought. So when we think of action, we always believe it's something we do with physical hands and feet and all of that and body movement. But this time is a mind movement to pull the energy of joy to yourself. 
once we make the decision to see more joy we will receive more joy so if we make a decision to see joy um and you know like there is more to joy than this and i don't want anybody to be upset if i bring it out like this because i don't choose it it chooses me so saint um the apostle james talks about joy and he's saying in it is to see joy in challenges and, and that is tough and and he's saying you should be able to see joy in challenges and and that is what the, the gospel tells us that is what jesus preaches joy is in challenges good morning yuko how are you feeling today so if i go there do not take it badly because it's just how it is so a child shows it the best the child cries and then within minutes later with this you see them smiling and giggling and laughing and you wonder why no we don't wonder why we just let it go but i wonder what jesus meant when he said suffer the little children to come to me i wonder because he spoke in so many parables so i took it meaning suffer the attitude the ways of the little children to be part of your life to come to you so in the middle of a crying fit something you might just say something to them or they see something <laughs> and they're giggling away i see it every day here kylie gets up in a mood like yesterday she was at the zoo so she came home and she was in a mood i am so tired i saw so many animals I am so tired. I'm just going to jump in the in the bathtub and go to sleep. Oh, okay. So she didn't jump in the bathtub. She stayed there. But you could see. And I want to get out. Oh, she's crying. And then I walked into the bathroom and I looked at her and I said, Gee, your cheeks look pink. Ha <laughs> ha, they're pink. I pinched them to make them pink. Just like that. Her attitude changed. Although she was not happy. That she had to stay in the bathtub according to the rules of her mother and get her really soaked out all these zoo, all these zoo things so anyway i wonder if we should practice that that in the middle in middle of having a challenge we find an opportunity to smile that's what children do and the smile overtakes they soon forget have you noticed that when a child has attempted to do something and that thing is not satisfactory going as they want it to go and they're challenged they walk away and they pick up another so suffer the little children to come to me was it their ways good morning Arita. how are you feeling this morning was it their ways jesus was talking about a child cries and a child smiles and sometimes it's within less than a minute so when we have these challenges it is very important that we realize it is a challenge and that too shall pass and find joy your joy does not have anything to do with the challenge you think you, you, you are experiencing it is a it is a way of choosing the challenge of life with inner contentment satisfaction and peace so it is a way of choosing joy is a way of choosing that the challenges of life you see it with inner contentment satisfaction and peace so whatever the challenge is going on it is not inside of us it's outside of us it might be right next door to us it might be in our on a, the next chair next to you the energy might transpire and shake you but it's not in you so how do we manage in this turmoil of challenges to find contentment inner not outside contentment, inner contentment, satisfaction, and peace. I got that from the Bible. Inner contentment, satisfaction, and peace in the middle of a challenge. So, one thing I know, I use colors a lot. There are some colors that I will, I, I know, and they, I know the meaning of the colors for me. So, brown means the faith and the patience to just go on just keep it up and blue means the power of gratitude and prayer and white 
means peace, joy, tranquility. So one of the things I do when, I, when I'm feeling that way, I will, I'm feeling like I'm lose, losing touch with my peace, my joy, my tranquility. I harness it by wearing white somewhere on me. I pull it through the color of white because that's my belief. There was a time they would, these people would charge you money to give you little pieces of fabric and tell you these are the colors you should wear. To this day, I have friends that still go by this. I am a winter, I am a summer, I am whatever, right? I don't know if anybody, any of you are here old enough to remember that. So when the, when the, when the heaviness and the burden comes on you, to manage this, and you have to do it, what do you do? You put your power color on. What is your power color? The color of determination, focus, I can stick, stick to witness, I can do this. And that is when you're feeling weak and you know, I cannot do this. So to get the peace, you choose white. To get the determination, the focus, the stick to witness, and I can do it, you get something and you put the black suit on. Remember they call it the power suit? It is a way of choosing the challenges of life and look at them with inner contentment, satisfaction, and peace. Learning to respond to those challenges in life, it must begin with the conscious awareness that God is at work in our lives and the universe has our back. It doesn't matter though, because every rope has an end. And sometimes those challenges that zaps our joy because we allow it, it's a choice. Good morning, Jilly. It's a, it's a choice to allow a, a something happening outside of us to zap our joy. Because our joy is all internal. And if in all of your seeking, they tell you to seek wisdom and seek a little bit of joy, what is joy? And find it. Joy is the thing that keeps you afloat when you feel like you're sinking. Because joy makes you just, just a glimmer of hope because of joy. And that is why it is so important for us to capture joy and go looking for it inside of us. We have been doing a lot of inside searching. Remember you went to look for the little child inside of you that was hurt at the age of three or told they weren't good enough by seven and they believed it. And, and there's that child waiting to be discovered and say, give me a chance to bloom. Well, give, hope, give joy a chance to bloom inside of you. Slap it into you. We, we seem to have experiences of joy um, all the time. And we get it. Sometimes we're so busy looking at what is not good that we forget that, hey, we just had joy. The child will go from crying in seconds to being joyful a child will face a, a challenge and walk away and start a brand new one. And maybe if you observe them, they'll go back to that first one that they left because now they're clear. God is, a, God is at work in our lives, no matter what we expect, we're experiencing, and, the, and indeed the universe has our back. So, that, so let go what you cannot control. Use the serenity prayer. God, Grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change or I cannot control. The courage to change those I can and the wisdom to know the difference. Hmm. When that is a, a prayer of desperation, because a challenge outside of you is zapping your joy, you go back and you just stand, you go outside, breathe. And say, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. You know, sometimes we go after changing something we have absolutely no business attempting to change. And while we are doing this, we are not seeing the joy that is actually around us. Because the joy is within us. St. James told us that even in trials, you will find joy. Even in trials, you're going to find joy. But we don't see that. We remember trials, but we forget when we felt joy. We are so quick to say, to tell a friend a story about that. 
but we are not about the trial, but we do not remember to tell the friend about the joy. That is just so normal for humans. You know what I do in my gratitude journal? Every day when I'm writing my gratitude, I set my timer for two minutes and I write about the, the thing that brought me joy or happiness yesterday. Two minutes. I find one. I purposely go looking for a reason to be grateful for something that happened yesterday that brought me joy. And I write about it for two minutes. Because if you're going to write in your journal and you're only going to write about what made you sad, then that's what you're going to feel all the time. So we have, this, people say you look so joyful. I do feel joy. I am always <laughs> joyful to the point that I laugh when I first see a disaster and I cannot help it. I know I'm not laughing at it, but I cannot control that. And when I ask questions about it, it's just because you, you see joy in everything. I will come up to the point and I will work on it right away. But for the first maybe 30 seconds, <laughs> I will laugh. And I know it seems mean, but it's not, I'm not laughing at the situation. I'm releasing my joy. So it gives me the strength so that I can help you or help myself or stand up and fight for myself or stand up and fight for others. Have you ever been, somebody says something to you and you go, that's joy speaking. That is joy telling you, hey, you're okay. Enjoy that. It's okay. And then you might turn back and tell them, give them uh, the middle finger. Only my cousin Ina didn't know it was a special finger, so she gave the index finger, and she was so proud she did it. And we all started laughing at her. And why are you laughing? That's not the right finger. It doesn't matter, but I gave them a finger. You guys didn't say there was supposed to be a special finger. That was her answer to this whole thing. So in your gratitude journal, write down for two minutes, time yourself. And you know what? The more you do it, the more you will find, boom, as the energy stops, the timer will go. Two minutes, something that brought you joy. It could be picking peas from beans from your garden. You have a pet and the pet suddenly comes and snuggles to you. It could be something somebody says to you. It could be a blessing somebody gives you. Oh, I love you. I'm praying for you. I know everything you desire will come to you. How did you feel when you heard that? Or when the person said, oh, you, I love what you're wearing. Like when you guys tell me that, I feel good about it. And I celebrate it in that. And I make it, you know, so-and-so said that. The morning somebody greeted, like yesterday with Stacey. I, I'm just saying, good morning, nephew. Long time, no see. Um, so two minutes for your thing that brought you joy. And then I do three small gratitudes after that. I'm happy and grateful I have the opportunity and the honor to do the morning blessings today. I'm happy and grateful I had a wonderful shower. Little things. I'm happy and grateful in the challenge, the turmoil, there was the time the wind stopped. In the middle of a hurricane, do you know that the hurricane doesn't just go on and on and on and on and never stop? Do you know that? The wind moves and then there's calm and nothing moves. So in the turmoil, there's always a sliver of calmness and that's what you celebrate. Instead of celebrating the hurricane destroyed my entire life, but concentrate on what it is you desire more of. I need the peace and the joy and the tranquility. So when the wind blew by, there was a moment of tranquility. When I left the challenge for a minute and I walked away from the challenge, I felt joy. Write that in your journal. The more you talk and write about joy, the more you will get because where attention goes, energy flows. And we know that. So. So let us so let go of what we cannot control. 
and use the serenity prayer. Google it. Modify it. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Pause. And the courage to change those I can. And again, pause. And see what happens. And if the turmoil is overwhelming you, keep repeating that prayer. Make it your mantra. Um, joy is in the energy of the world. We can see the we can see the glimmer of joy causing causing through, and it's up to us to capture it. Joy is in the energy of the world, and we can see it. I'm just going like that, and it's up to us to grab it for that second and savor it, like you're savoring a nice piece of bread or cake, whatever you like. We remember trials, but we forget when we felt joy. A feeling of great pleasure and happiness. This is what joy is. A feeling of great pleasure and happiness. Morning, Gabby. True joy is limitless. It is a life-defining, defi transformative reservoir waiting to be tapped into. Wow. That's joy. Joy is limitless. You can find it. I am alive. I can breathe. And do not compare it to your family or friends who can't breathe. Or the person that just died and say, I'm so happy I'm still alive. She died. Hey, stop that. True joy is limitless. It is a life-defining, transformative reservoir waiting to be tapped into. You have a reservoir of joy waiting for us to go into it it is life transforming and it's limitless there's enough joy for everybody joy is a serum it's like a tonic and it makes you feel better it's an instant tonic i see joy when people have a prescription at the pharmacy well, he gave me that prescription and it, I, and I, it knocked it off. I always re remember my cousin Jean. Jean believes that antibiotics heals her colds. So some doctor gave her two whatever, I don't know much about them, 250. And she called back and she said, <laughs> did that pharmacy, why 250? I want him, and she's telling me, I want him to give me 500 so he can knock it out. And I'm thinking, wow, I had no idea what that is. And I go, okay. So why don't we go and get 500 grams of joy every day intentionally? How do we do that? Is to look for it in all the unexpected places. See joy in the smile of somebody, not in the torment of that soul. If that person don't have joy and they have, they're tormented right now, good morning, Marina, missed you. How are you feeling today? If they do not have joy and their life is in turmoil and it's a challenge and it's affecting you, in, there is a tiny sliver. Ask yourself, if they didn't have this experience happening to them, would they be better? Do they have a little bit of joy every time? Remember, in the darkness is the crack that shows us there's something there. Joy is a serum. And as I said, True joy is limitless. It just flows and flows and flows. It is a life-defining, transformative reservoir waiting to be tapped into. As I said to you, the first time I really felt the serum coming through me, I remember I was going home, coming down the Guildwood Hill. I live in Guildwood Village, so the Guildwood Hill, coming down to the lake. And just as I got, just as we got to the turn, I felt like somebody had split my head open and something was causing through my body. And I started laughing. I'm driving alone, coming from work, and I'm laughing away. And I got home and I was telling Brian of the experience. He said, you, hello, sister, you just got the serum of joy. He said, they talk about it. I said, who is they? He said, I heard it somewhere in Ireland from, from my Irish grandmother. 
I go, okay. <laughs> and that's all I could say. So you see, the serum of joy is St. James talks about it. He says, even in the challenges, there is joy. But when you inhale it, when you, it's a limitless thing. It's there. It doesn't have to go. You don't have to always see the pain of the moment or what is happening. There is always a sliver of joy. And that is what we hold on to. Um, you know, you have, you, when you go to untie a rope, you only have a little, two little ends. And when you pull it, or better still, when you're knitting or crocheting and you make a mistake, you pull on there to unravel it. You could unravel an entire sweater that is already made and worn by just pulling slightly on, this, on the wool, a little bit, and you can take it apart and start again. So joy is like that. Just pull on the little bit that is showing up for you. That little bit of joy you get. Instead of seeing all what is not good to where you are, see the little tiny thing that's good in where you are. So as I will repeat it again, and I want you to remember that, true joy is limitless. It's never going to be finished. It is a life defining, it def joy defines you and it's a transformative reservoir. So it's defining, it has endless amount. And all that it is doing is waiting to be tapped into. So joy just wants you to come and take endless amount, limitless amount. And it's really truly up to you. We must surrender to it. We must let it is the love it requires us to surrender to. It is a choice we must make. We must surrender to it. It's like love. It requires us to surrender. It is in a choice we make. You know, the closest I can bring joy to is love. When we are in love with someone, we open up and we surrender. It's like the lotus flower has just opened up and bloomed. We open up and we accept the love from another. And when we feel love for that person, we open up and we consume it entirely. And we cannot find joy. Because joy will never leave us once it is tapped into us. Whereas the love of another will wane because we change or they change. And we don't change along with them, or we change and they do not come on for the ride. But no matter what we do, we give it in the beginning so much surrender. And that is why when love doesn't work, it hurts so much. Because we gave so much. We had nothing left enough. We gave love all our nerves and sinew. We beat ourselves up to accept and to open up to taking that love from another. And yet, that which is available, that is limitless, that is in the energy of the world, that all we have to do is to be willing to, to tap into it and grab it. But to be willing to do that, we must realize it is going to define us. It's going to make us into that other person that we desire to become. Stronger, more self-loving, determined. I had a few there, I think I lost it. It gives us, I found it, inner contentment satisfaction and peace that's what love gives us all we have to do is to learn to tap into it take it and swallow it like we swallow love remember your first love you couldn't eat oh when you saw that person you couldn't sleep your heart was beating and you might have some friends in their 70s and they're still having heart palpitations every year because they found a new lover and I, one of them, I said to her, really? Don't you think 
this should really stop. How can your heart handle this? It's every six months to a year you find another lover and you're in love. And she, you should see her. And then when it breaks for a month, she's, you don't know what to do with her. Whereas she doesn't open up to tap into joy that is available. But she takes that love for six months, a year, and then she's thirsty. So she goes running for it again. And that is what is a lack of joy within you that caused all these men and women to be taken advantage of financially on the internet. Whereas they can find their joy. And if you have joy, you stand independently. You, are, you have an inner contentment. I don't need anybody to complete me, you say. I don't need anybody to satisfy me. I can satisfy myself with my joy and my peace. So have a wonderful and amazing day. And remember, all you have to do is make the effort knowing that joy is limitless. Make an effort to go towards something that is limitless. If it takes you 10 years, it's still going to be there for you to tap into. If it takes you a lifetime, it's still going to be there on your dying bed for you to tap to. And it is defining you, transforming you to something, and you're picking up that reservoir, waiting to be tapped. It's there. So take it. Let's, let's put joy in our life. We need it. Or you just back some memories I shared with my mom, joyful moments. Crocheting, going to get some today. It's been over 20 years, oh my goodness. I crocheted bedspread, I've crocheted and everything. I am a big crocheter in the days when I just wanted to crochet. But you know, you evolve. So no, I just accept them and I love them. Thank you everybody for coming. I was checking on your comments. Did I take your breath away? Nobody spoke about it except Georgie. Hi, Arita. Georgie, Lisa, Marina, Colin, Chili, Gabby, Don, Loretta. Family today. They, everybody dropped in. Wonderful family with the family. So now we have a complete thing like that. So guys, have a wonderful more. Um, sorry, I was late. We'll watch full later. Thanks, Donnie. Um, so guys, have fun today. It's Thursday. It's an hour at noon and be on the love channel. So we may we will see what we talk we can, we can talk about on YouTube. Have a great day. And those of you that job by I haven't seen for a while, I appreciate you. I'm happy and grateful you're here. And enjoy your day. See you guys on the other side of time.